You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a crash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is a tutorial on how to install and use Signal Private Messenger to do encrypted chat and make encrypted voice and video calls. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. This is a video on how to install and use Signal on an iPhone. If you have an Android smartphone instead, you can click or tap on the pop-up message and then choose the Android video to watch that. There's also an overview video explaining what Signal is and why you should use it, which you can access in the same way. We strongly recommend that you watch that video before this one because it contains some important warnings that you need to know about before you start using Signal. If you want to keep watching this video, stay tuned. The phone numbers used during technical demonstrations in this tutorial do not belong to any individual. Their SIM cards were purchased with the sole purpose of recording these tutorials, and the accounts have long since been deregistered and the SIMs discarded. The numbers are therefore no longer in operation and cannot be used to contact InfoSec Bytes. It's time to get hands-on with our smartphone and start installing Signal Private Messenger. From your iPhone's home screen, tap the icon for the App Store to open the store, or if the icon is not on your home screen, open the store in the way you normally do. Select Search at the bottom right, and then type in Signal Private Messenger and press Search. The first option in the list should be the Signal Private Messenger from Open Whisper Systems. Tap on the app to open the app's store page, where you can view details about it. From there, you can go ahead and tap the Get button to install the app, and then wait while the app store downloads Signal and then begins to install it. Once it's finished, the Signal icon should appear on your home screen. And if you can't find it, swipe down and use the search bar to find it. Tap on the Signal icon to start Signal. The first thing Signal asks you to do is to register your phone number. Let's just stop for a bit to discuss this step. Signal is asking for your phone number in much the same way that other messaging apps like WhatsApp do, in order to prove that you control that phone number. This is a protection against someone else signing up to use Signal with your phone number and impersonating you. When you enter your number, Signal sends an SMS text message to that number with a verification code, which you then type into Signal to prove that you own that phone number. Your phone number is then your identity while you use Signal. This means that anyone you communicate with using Signal knows your phone number. There are some issues with this. Whereas using your phone number may be fine for the general user, there may be some situations in your work as a journalist where you wish to communicate securely with someone without giving away your phone number. If you don't want to use your own phone number, there is a way to use Signal without doing so, but it's a bit complicated. You can buy a cheap burner phone and a prepay SIM card. Depending on the jurisdiction you live in, you may or may not have to register your details to buy a SIM. You can then use the phone number for your burner phone to register on your smartphone and your verification code will be sent to the burner instead. Then you can input the verification code into your smartphone, and from there on, Signal will be registered to the burner number, and not your smartphone's actual phone number. You may want to keep the burner around, in case you need to re-register Signal at a later date. We're going to avoid that complication in this tutorial, and use the mobile phone's actual number. Type your phone number in here, and then press Activate this device. Now, wait while Signal sends you out a verification SMS. When the SMS arrives, go to it by clicking on the notification or by going into your messaging app. Take down the number and then go back to Signal and type in the number. Then press Submit Verification Code. Signal now asks you if it can have access to your contacts. You need this in order to be able to text anyone, so tap OK. Signal now asks you if it can show you notifications. You'll want this too. Tap Allow. Now you're looking at the Signal home screen. When you have conversations, they will appear as a list on this screen. 
If you tap the Compose icon, you will see a list of your contacts who are already using Signal. Your contacts for Signal must be saved in your address book on the phone for them to appear here. Signal will automatically read your contact list and it will work out which of your contacts are already using Signal. If you've just gotten someone else to install Signal and they haven't yet appeared on this list, exit the contacts list and then re-enter it and they should appear. To message someone, tap their name in this list and a message window will open, just like with a regular messaging app. Now you can type them a message and press send. Once the message is sent, Signal will show you a sent status under the message. And once it's delivered to your contact, the status will change to delivered. On Signal, unlike with WhatsApp's blue ticks, there is no way to know if or when the message is read. When your contact texts you back, their messages will appear in line. You can proceed to chat with Signal the same way you chat with any other messaging app. Signal has a special concept called safety numbers that lets you be certain that you are talking directly to your contact's device. To use it, while you're in the messaging window, tap the name of your contact at the top of the screen and then tap Verify Safety Numbers. Get your contact to do the same thing. Your phones will display QR codes accompanied by a block of numbers. The number should be the same on both screens. If it's the same, that means that nobody is intercepting your signal conversation. If you're not in the same place as your contact, you should authenticate by comparing the block of numbers using a different means of communication, not signal, for instance via a trusted intermediary. You may wish to share only a part of the number and have your contact share a different part of the number with you. If they check out, all is good. But if you and your contact are in the same place, it's much easier. With your phone, tap the scan code camera icon at the bottom to turn on the camera. It might ask you for permission to use the camera. Say yes. Then, hold your phone over your contact's phone to scan their QR code. Then get them to do the same for you. The apps will tell you if the QR codes for your safety numbers check out. Once you've verified each other's safety numbers, as long as the safety numbers don't change, you know you are talking to your friend. Safety numbers should only change if your friend gets a new phone or has to uninstall and then reinstall Signal. You can send emoji on Signal the same way you send emoji on any other app. To the left of the text entry field is a tiny paperclip icon. When you tap on this, it gives you some media options. The first one is to snap a photograph from Signal and send that to your contact. The second one allows you to select media files from your iPhone's photo library and send them as attachments. The third option allows you to send any other type of file from your iPhone's storage. Signal also has a feature to let you send messages that disappear a set amount of time after your contact reads them. Press the name at the top again and flick the switch to turn on disappearing messages. Use the slider to choose how long the message will last before they are deleted. We'll choose 5 seconds. As you can see, when you send a message, it will appear for 5 seconds and a tiny hourglass icon will slowly count down the time and then it will disappear. The same happens when a contact sends a message to you. It's worth mentioning that even though the message disappears, there is no guarantee that the person you are communicating with hasn't taken a photograph of the message or recorded it in some other way. You can turn off disappearing messages by going back into the menu and flicking the switch to off. You are not limited to chatting with a single person over Signal. You can also have group chats containing several of your contacts, all of which are fully encrypted. From the Contacts List window, press the Group button at the top right. From the Group Setup window, type in the name of your new group and tap Contacts to add them to the group. When you're finished, tap the plus to start the group, and then you can start chatting in the same way as you would with an individual contact. The name of your contacts will appear beside each of their messages. Signal also lets you call your contact so you can chat on the phone or chat face-to-face -face using video chat, and all of this is also end-to-end -end encrypted. To call your contact, tap on the phone icon here. A screen will appear showing the call connecting and then ringing. The first time you do it, it may ask for access to your microphone. Say yes. 
just wait for your contact to answer. Or if your contact is calling you, the caller screen looks like this. Press the green button to answer. There are also some buttons on the call screen. This one puts the call on mute, so you can speak without your caller hearing you. This one puts your caller on loudspeaker, so you can talk hands-free. And this one turns on your front-facing camera to start your end of a video call. If you press this, your contact will be able to see you, but you won't see them until they press the same button on their side. Use the same button again to turn off your camera. You can hang up by pressing the red button here. It's important to remember all of Signal's communications are sent over the data channel, so make sure you have a good data connection to use Signal, especially if you're having trouble with voice or video calls. Signal will periodically update and may add new features or fix bugs in the software. If you see an update notification for Signal, do update it as soon as possible, because updates for security software are important. There's plenty more to say about Signal, but now that you're up and running with Signal and your texts and calls are end-to-end -end encrypted, that's it for this tutorial on Signal for iPhone. If you want to watch the Signal for Android tutorial, or if you'd like to watch the overview video on what Signal is and why you should use it, click or tap on the pop-up message and choose your video now. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and co-workers. To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.